folks. So, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining this session. Hello, everyone. So we will talk about uh, the digital transformation in finance. Like, as you know, all the industries are going through transformation because of uh, the new technologies and new ways of doing things. And we thought it would be a good idea to talk about this type of activities happening in finance industry as well to give you some background and some more information about what's happening there. Before we start, we can perhaps introduce ourselves. Yes, uh, this is Omar Saatcholu. I'm working at Stockholm at McKinsey, and I'm helping uh, European companies, European traditional companies, to do digital transformation and technological advancements. Yeah. Oh, uh, I am Fatih Dermanj. I work for Ericsson Software Technology as a developer, and I have no idea about finance. So I must say that first, because I mainly work in telco space and with the open source communities who are actually working with the new technologies that enables next generation telecom networks. And before we start with the rest of the uh, presentation, I want to say how this idea came up, because I am a telco person, he is working with finance person, and like why we have this talk with people from two different industries. We were having a couple of beers together, and we were talking about like, what are you doing within? We are friends, right? Yeah. yeah, we are friends. We are friends. And we are still friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we said like, okay, I am working in telco. We are doing this type of stuff in open source, and he said, oh, we are working with banks and so on. And I said like, why are you not talking about what you are doing in open source conferences and open stack, open infrastructure summit is coming up? Are you fine? We submit a talk together, and we said, yeah, let's go and submit a talk and talk about the stuff that is happening in open source communities and also happening in finance industry in order to uh, kind of show that there are many similarities when it comes to challenges, principles, and practices across different industries, like how they are across different open source communities. So that's how we came up with the idea to submit this talk yeah. and talk about finance industry and their challenges and the work that's happening there. So if we look at the open source communities and the technologies developed by these communities, OpenStack community, the pilot projects that take part in OpenStack Foundation, like Kata, Zool, and other projects, they develop new technologies, like CNCF, like Linux Foundation networking, and so on. And all these technologies, they address certain use cases. They implement certain requirements. They solve some challenges for their end users, which could be either telco industry or tele uh, finance industry or other industries. And in order for these technologies to re really provide what end users are after, these communities need to work together. Because these days, everyone puts everything on top of each other. They put o Kubernetes on top of OpenStack, and then they put OpenStack on Kubernetes, and then they put SDN controller. So everything needs to come together one way or the other to solve certain problems. And this can't happen without close collaboration between these communities like OpenStack community coming together with CNCF community, Linux Foundation networking communities talking with OpenStack community to find solutions to common problems and work together like a big community. And all these communities, they develop these technologies in different ways. Of course, we might all want to have one way to do things, but it is not logical and it's not beneficial because all the communities have their own needs. And this results in differences in the tools they use, like if you are a developer, if you are working with OpenStack, you go to OpenDev, get it, and you send a patch there, your patch gets reviewed, your patch gets tested, and finally submitted. If you look at CNCF community, the, community, uh, the projects hosted by CNCF work on GitHub, and they have their own CI CD solutions. But in the end, no matter what communities are using, we all need to work together and find ways to collaborate effectively. And again, going back to the actual topic of this talk, we need to share with each other across these communities. And even more than that, we perhaps should try to reuse what each of these communities are developing. I am working in Linux Foundation networking projects. I am a contributor to OpenFE project, and that is an integration project. And that is our biggest challenge, because as an integration project, we take all these different technologies and 
create different infrastructure solutions by composing these different components. And in order for us to be successful with this, we need to have some alignment across all these communities. I'm not talking about the tooling, because you might be using Zool, we might be using Jenkins, but in the end, we should be able to construct delivery pipelines across all these different communities so we can pull those components into our community and compose them and test them and provide feedback to OpenStack community like an end user. In order to achieve that, we need to talk with each other, we need to go to each other's conferences, we need to work with each other on our uh, environments to solve the problems and also reuse things. And all these communities and all the new technologies that have been developed by the communities, the open technologies, like such as cloud virtualization, infrastructure as a service, cloud native, and the methodologies that help us achieve developing these technologies resulted in big advances in all the industries. Everything is disrupted. Overnight, a small startup can come up with really cool service solving many big problems. They don't need to have like thousands of people. They don't need to be located in a certain geographic location. They can just go, bring one service up, and they can hit every player in the same industry. And this actually is beneficial because with what those companies are doing and how those companies are using new technologies and adapting to new ways of doing things, we can all learn from each other. And this helps us to change how we are doing things in different industries like telecom. Since I am a telecom person, in telecom, this 5G is already happening. There is a booth downstairs. You can go and see the 5G radios and so on. So that is built based on open infrastructure using airship, using open source technologies. And if you look at transportation, there are work, there is work happening there to change how transportation is done. And finally, which is the topic of this talk, is the finance industry. And Omar will talk more about what's happening there, but I'm sure you signed up some services that lets you open bank account in a minute rather than days. So that type of stuff changing everything. And that is happening with the help of open technologies and open way of working, like four opens. In order to ensure what is happening and what we are doing is viable and sustainable long term and help all these industries, we need to collaborate across industries as well. In the beginning, I said the collaboration is going on across communities. And the next or a similar thing needs to start happening with different industries, between, between different industries, which might be happening already, but it might need to happen more perhaps to ensure whatever is done in open source communities can help solve problems for more end users. And in order for us to do that, we need to first listen from the people who are working in these different industries to talk about their challenges, what are they doing to address those challenges, what kind of work they are doing to transform those industries digitally. So, Omar will talk about those parts now, giving you more information about what is happening in the finance industry. Thank you very much for the introduction uh, and for a good uh, presentation. Uh, yes, I would like to start uh, with some... Uh, I would like to start to support your, your introduction, actually, and talk a little bit more about with my own words about about different in industries and how different industries are merging, emerging into a one type of technology stack. I mean, before 20, 30 years ago, banking has uh, banking industry has COBOL, uh, telecom industry has Erlang, and uh, even the programming languages were different. But right now, we are in a, in a state that all these technologies are uh, start to be used by every kind of uh, industry that you could imagine. And uh, the catalyst for this are the startups, actually. The startups are coming to the industry and shows that they can do much better with the new technologies, with the open technologies, uh, compared to the other companies. So we saw this disruption in telecom, in IPTV media, with Netflix, in uh, transportation. Uh, and of course, the finance, we will see that. So. Uh, 
there, so in this sense, uh, Europe market uh, for the finance uh, is having two different challenges. One is the new startups. There are like hundreds, start, hundreds of startups uh, emerging from uh, European capitals. And three of them are already uh, EU-wide right now, Revolut, Monzo, and N26. And they are providing all their operations without any physical uh, physical store, physical uh, branch, uh, including KYC, know your customer. And thanks to the uh, EU-wide uh, single market policy, uh, they, can, they can operate in all European countries with a single license. This is one thing that uh, European com customers, uh, European companies, uh, banks, start to see the pressure from there. And also the single market policy uh, is also opens up a new competition actually for the traditional banks in different countries. Mostly the northern, uh, northern uh, banks in northern countries are better at digital transformation and they have already done this transformation a long time ago, like four or five years ago. And uh, the southern European banks start to see the competition or start to understand that they need to reinvent themselves to stay relevant. And we see that in the early adapters that young professionals and students are, university students are already start to use this uh, uh, fintech company services because they don't take anything. They don't charge anything for any transaction for owning a bank account. Owning a bank account takes like a couple of minutes. It's like hassle-free and much leaner operation. So about the company, uh, my cust the customer that we were, we were working with to, to do the digital transformation, uh, it's a traditional company that has been in, the, in operation for centuries, for a couple of centuries. And uh, the IT department consists of silos, like we could see in the traditional comp IT companies in 2000s, which is like centuries ago for us, right? Uh, and the business flow, the uh, business flow is formulated as one way. So, whenever it needs to do an, uh, a fix or something like this, it's always like needs to find the, uh, the the business flow needs to find the exception to fix that problem. And there are also some ongoing efforts in, on agile transformation, but uh, this transformation created some kind of hybrid workflows. For example, the business division is creating the user stories based on the business requirements, and then they test, they signed off together with the testing division, and then it goes to the development division. So the developers are still in the, at the end of the value stream here. Technology part is a little bit better, actually. Uh, so there are ongoing efforts on DevOps tools. Uh, but they are limited and local. And there are some big bank projects, like uh, there, there was this rewrite of a specific service that, they, that is very critical of their operation. And uh, it has been like two years of project, and they didn't, do any, have any, they didn't have any delivery in this two years of period. So it's like a big bank delivery. Uh, TeamFS, Microsoft TeamFS is used for uh, task management, VCS and the computing power is solely based on on-prem and Windows servers. So this is, the, this is kind of the summary of, uh, of the European market and the customer itself. Now, what is really digital transformation, right? I mean, when you are thinking about digital transformation, we can start with a very quick example, actually. For example, this. So you take an analog, analog signal, and then you hammer it on top a little bit, you know, and then you come, uh, you, you squeeze it a little bit down here and then hammer it a bit more and then it becomes a square and then you come, you bring the this, this digital transformation, right? I can give you a pro tip about this. Uh, it's better to squeeze in the, the wave between your legs actually so that it doesn't jump on your face when you're hammering, okay? <laughs> okay, that was the stupid joke part, okay? Thank you very much for the laugh. Uh, <laughs> so digital transformation is not about the technology, actually. It's more about uh, mentality, changing the mentality 
to use the new technologies that we have in the last five, 10 years for the business purpose, for the developer's purpose. We, will, we, we are doing the digital transformation to help the developers and business people to operate faster. So in this sense, actually, we started a, a pilot project and we uh, gathered uh, like 15 developers, testers, uh, five uh, business people, product owner, uh, business developer, and such. And then we created this cross-functional agile team, scrum team. Uh, and we, we worked on four different uh, sections, actually, to, to have a digital transformation project. Uh, and of course, we had a goal. We had a goal to build a feature, a new digital feature for the bank. So uh, these are organization, automation, method, and legacy. I will start to talk about this one by one. Uh, sorry. Oops, another joke. So here. OK. Sorry. Uh, this one. OK, here. Uh, scrum teams. We created scrum teams, we, and we established all these scrum ceremonies, like you know, sprint planning, retrospective, daily stand-ups, and stuff, to create the first if, first layer for the developers, first uh, contract, let's say, for developers and business people to talk to each other. Uh, and of course, it started with a Calgo card. I mean, first people thinking. I mean, people don't know the purpose of these ceremonies but we just follow it. But within time, with the coaching and within time, it actually helps the developers and business people to understand this, uh, to understand the purpose of these uh, ceremonies. And the Scrum Master is quite critical here in, the, in this, uh, in this uh, transformation because we are having a lot of analog people still in the organization. And we need to protect our digital people digital team. So Scrum Master actually is doing a really good job. Uh, good Scrum Master is actually doing a really good job in this one to help to defend the, the, the digital team or like Scrum team um, to the rest of the organization. Uh, we were blessed that we, we had a really good Scrum Master actually and uh, he, was, uh, he was doing a tremendous job on this from the client side. And the next one is more about automation. So automation is also important in our uh, journey, in our digital transformation journey, because we need to make sure that we have fail fast, uh, fail fast and move fast type of mentality. And automation is a critical part here, right? We need to be able to deliver fast and deploy it fast to be able to see the result. So this is a typical CI/CD pipeline that you can see in every major uh, technology companies. The developers start with their local machine, they, they push it to source control. From source control, it goes to the uh, build and test servers. Build server is uh, building it, the test server runs the test, and if everything goes nice, we put it on the build repository, and from build repository, it ends up in the dev environment. We had to do it till dev environment because we have some limitations uh, in the bank, the IT environment. So we, we have test environment and the, the production environment, but we couldn't do the deployment to, uh, to these two environments. And we used TeamFS because they were, they were already having the technology, the tools, everything. So it's not a tooling problem. It's more about the usage, right? And we make sure that this pipeline is used by the developers every day, in, uh, every day with the commit to the main branch. Um, yeah. The next one is, I mean, if it's not more important than organization, I think it's may, way more important than automation, the, using the modern development practices. Having, the, having nice tools and everything, doesn't solve your problem. You need to use these tools. Uh, and to be able to use these tools, you need to know 
uh, certain, technology, uh, certain techniques. And to start with is the TDD, the test driven development. You start with the failed test cases, you write failed test cases, and then you write the implementation to uh, pass your test cases and you re reiterate again, refactor and reiterate again. again. And the other one is the, to have a sane uh, version control. We also established Git flow. That's also one of, the, one of the ceremony that you start with to create a cargo cult. And then after that, when people start to understand the purpose of branching and having different user stories in different branches, you can start to graduate from this Git flow. But TDD is very critical. Uh, yeah, and we did all the pull requests rigorously, uh, reviewed them so that uh, we make sure that our master branch is ready to ship, even though it's not shipped, it's ready to be shipped when it's needed. Uh, and the last thing about it is the legacy. Every one of us wants to start a new project and wants to write solely our own, own code. We don't want to read other developers' code, but this is a myth. I mean, this is a unicorn. We cannot redo really it. So we had a lot of legacy code as well in our, in our uh, repository. So what we did, we started with the encapsulating the dependencies and, and create dependency injections so that our external, external libraries or backend API APIs doesn't interfere with our test cases. I will explain it a bit more. So we create this uh, mock libraries that mocks the interfaces as far as we see it. Uh, the same for external libraries or backend APIs or any other functionality that still important for us, but it is out of our scope. And uh, we put this unit test, tests, uh, we created unit tests to test this function, to test the interfaces, and we put them in the pipeline to be run in every commit change. So that when we see that there is a uh, change in the, in, in the code that we are out of scope, we can spot it on the failed test case and we can fix it either by talking with that department or fixing our own interfaces. Uh, this also helped us actually to uh, write concise uh, function-based unit test cases for our own source code. Uh, because we, we, don't need, we don't need to, need to start, we, don't need, uh, we didn't need to write test cases to test the external functionalities or the combination of external uh, functionalities anymore. Uh, I get a lot of help from uh, two books, actually. Martin Fowler's Refactoring 2 and Michael Feather's Working Efficiently with Legacy Code. They are really great books. I suggest them to everyone. I, I, really, I like to thank them from here for their great knowledge sharing. Uh, so far, that's it. These are the four things that we have, uh, four tools that we used, actually, for digital transformation. And I will talk a bit more about the end result. The end result is about three things, speed, quality, and ownership. Uh, we start to have multiple deployments per day. Uh, we start to deploy to the uh, dev environment within a minute without any manual inter intervention. Uh, and the, the, as, we, as I said, the, the build or the, uh, the release is ready to be deployed all the time. We got instant feedback culture so that, so that the developers can see their failed, failed test cases before it becomes like a snowball effect. And we had the, the development environment or the build server is our, became our single point of truth to manage different type of dependency problems, dependency, dependency issues. And ownership, developers start to feel more responsible uh, as they are seeing their changes are uh, effective instantly. Uh, the sense of quality was really high, actually. Some of the developers told us uh, one by one, said like, this is the, uh, this is the, this is the uh, highest ownership 
for the quality that they could see as a project in that country. Uh, yeah, and the business developers actually get along with the developers. I mean, it's very normal, but uh, that was really nice end result. So all of these results actually are about the are about improving the, the, the developers' experience and business people experience on, on their work actually. It's not about revenue and stuff. It's more about the developers and business people. But of course it affects the the company revenue of course. So what's next? Uh, we are still early, of course. I mean, we, we are not early. We did a, quite, quite big transformations, but we are still behind on some of things like test coverage because of the legacy code. Uh, we need to, to, need to uh, change the legacy code organically to have, to, to have unit tested, to be able to test it nicely so that we can have zero touch uh, deployments and uh, single, single touch deployment, single click deployments also are kind of one of the targets actually that we would like to do before zero touch. Uh, expanding the usage of monitoring tools like Dynatrace and stuff. Uh, ensure the test environment, test data are set up and support uh, automated testing. We still have problems with the test data. Uh, and the last thing is actually what is what is this conference is all about is the cloud, right? Uh, we, we, our customer is actually quite concerned about security perspective of the cloud, uh, even the private cloud. But I saw a lot of good presentations here in this conference and I think I will bring some of them to the clients and uh, try to motivate them to move to that, uh, to try that journey as well. So that's it. That's it from me. Uh, any questions I would like to answer? You would like to answer? Yes. Can you use uh, the mic? microphone over there? <laughs> uh, so uh, thank you for that presentation. So <clears throat> I mean, one of the challenges you just mentioned now is, of course, security and regulatory compliance and all that stuff, right? Yeah. And if you go to speak to any bank today, you know, they'll all say that they use AWS, Azure, and so forth. But in this, <coughs> excuse me, in this um, example you have here with this bank, have they already worked out how they're actually going to run this? Because the practical aspects of, from a regulatory aspect, I mean, key is, of course, to be able to automate this all the way, yeah. to be able to use these tools, right? So yeah. are you having the dialogue around OpenStack, private clouds, most, I would say 90% of the data cannot live in a public cloud, so to speak. So what's, what's, your, uh, what's the strategy on that side? Well, the, I think the strategy uh, is first to start to transform some of their internal tools, right? Internal ways of working and internal tools. And this is what we, are, we try to achieve in the first phase. And the second phase, I'm thinking, I mean, we didn't discuss this with the client yet, so with the, with the customer yet, but we can, uh, I'm thinking of starting with the container architecture in, in, in on, on prem servers, even though it's not private cloud, pr public cloud, but we can start with the container architecture yeah. to understand uh, the, 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 the advantages of new technologies. And then also containers will help us to migrate to private cloud, public cloud, much easier, yeah. Would you say that OpenStack is a nice opportunity for a bank like this? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. I think we, together with the partners, uh, with the solution partners, I think OpenStack is a good solution. Uh, like I said, I, I talked with a couple of guys already here uh, yesterday and the day before. And I think we can use this kind of services. All right, thanks. Thank you very much. Any other question? Well done, Matt. Yes. Thank you very much, Thank everyone. You. Thanks a lot. We appreciate that you're coming.